Welcome! In front of me is an Honor Magic 5 Lite and today I will show you how we can go through the setup process of this phone. So, when you boot it up for the very first time you'll be presented with the welcoming screen where you get to select your desired language. It already selected English for me and that is what I'm going to be using so I don't need to change anything but obviously if you want to select any other ones, find it on a list, tap on it. Moving on to the next page, select your region. Now this is completely redundant, so I'm going to go to the next page, which is the terms of use. Now if you're interested in what you're actually agreeing to, you can tap on the details right here to extend the legal document that you're agreeing to. And from there, check that you have read and agreed to it, which allows you to go to the next page. Uh, on which you can insert your SIM card. Now this page is kind of useless because you can insert your SIM card at any point throughout the setup process and it will work just fine. Now the only reason why it shows up right here is because inserting a SIM card gives you the option to obviously utilize the SIM's um, mobile network, assuming you have one, right? And that is one of the methods you can sign into your Google account. So the other one would be also your Wi-Fi. Now, if you choose to skip both of them, like I will be doing right now, then logging into your Google account will not show up as the login page, and additionally, date and time won't be set automatically. Now, moving on to the next page, we have Google services like location, scanning, and sending user and diagnostic data. If you don't want any of these, you can turn them all off, and from there, scroll down and select Accept. Again, it's telling me that I have no network connection because typically that would be the Google login page, but no network, no login page. So I'm going to skip for now, which automatically goes to the next page, which is uh, data and privacy. Again, more crap that you get to agree to. You can tap on details and just select next from there. And here we have something more useful, which is protecting our device. We have three different methods of going about it. We have fingerprint sensor, we have face recognition and password, which includes pin, pattern, or password, as you can see. And by default, it opts into a six-digit pin. Now, uh, quickly going back into these two, the fingerprint and face recognition, if you're planning to use any of these, then you will also be forced to set up a password. So that would include pin, pattern, password. And the reason for that is uh, both of these options could change for you. So your fingerprint, if you cut your finger, that would implement, imply that the fingerprint just changed and therefore you'd lose access to your device. And same goes to your, to the, oh, along with the face recognition. Uh, maybe you get beat up, whatever the case may be. Maybe you are in an accident and your face gets bruised up and all of a sudden your phone doesn't recognize your face and you're kind of screwed because you can't access your device. That's why you always have to set up a uh, pin pattern or password, which obviously will not change no matter what happens to you. And obviously if you don't want to protect your device, you can select skip right over here, which then this moves us to the next page, which is enhanced services. Honestly, you can read what this is. I personally never cared about it, so I would always go with no thanks, but if you're interested in it, just read and either join or, or select later. Now, here we have uh, the keep your software up to date. Uh, this is a kind of a tricky one. It's a scummy way of doing things. So obviously you can see only button right here, enable and continue as the only button, but hold up. Yeah, blue text is a button too. If you don't want to enable it, you press right here. If you don't want to update your device automatically, and select don't enable and this then takes us to selecting our navigation it will by default try to turn on gesture navigation and it tells you to try it out if you have never used it if you have used it you can just close it up right here if you didn't you can see how that feels if you like it or not and once you complete this which i'm just going to go through it a little quickly right here there's only a couple of these And as you can see, it's done. So once you complete it, you can either utilize it by selecting finish, which will keep the gesture navigation, or if you wanted to change it, you would select change navigation method. And this will then bring back your buttons, if that is something that you're more used to. Anyway, I'm gonna stick with the gestures and finish it up. And as you can see, 
this is our home screen. So there we go. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.